The mystery of the mask. I have advocated the removing of our secular or religious mask to discover the eternal fact of our being sons of God, eternally begotten through Christ Jesus. To the disbelief of many following the doctrines of men, this is considered as heresy. He gets labeled as New Age thinking, universalism, inclusionism, or some new idea that doesn't fit traditional teachings handed down through human history. Reading Worms, chapter 11, reveals the need to have this mask removed. Let me walk you through this. I was told to read this chapter of Romans that it would reveal what I've been told to call the moving of the mask. This mask is just another mystery that the stewards of the mystery should know. You read this in verse 25 in chapter 11 of Romans. I do not want you believers to be unaware of this mystery, God's previously hidden plan, so you will not be wise in your own opinions. Notice that for you to see what is being shared, your opinion has to take a back seat. We know from scriptures that we aren't sufficient ourselves to evaluate anything, but we always do. And such confidence are we having through Christ to our God. Not that we are sufficient in ourselves to evaluate anything. This evaluation originating from ourselves, but our sufficiency has its source in God who has made us sufficient as those who minister a testament, new in quality, and not of the letter, but of the Spirit. 2 Corinthians 3, 5. This verse alone knocks out this idea of using the unaided mind, as I mentioned someone advocated in a comment on one of my videos. Our minds aren't sufficient enough to do this. This is addressing the fallen carnal mind of our fallen human soul. Notice that this source is through Christ, which clearly, Scripture clearly says is in us, this mind of Christ, said to be the same mind that was in Jesus, the Son of God, while in the mode of a son of man. It is not the fallen carnal mind of the fallen human soul that has followed the same lie that Adam Eve had followed, which introduced what is called a rogue soul, acting independent from God, dependent upon accumulated knowledge and cutting itself off from the intrinsic inborn knowledge of the human spirit. Many don't fully understand this mystery because it's not taught by teachers, tutors of the body of Christ. They are led to believe that their opinions of some particular denomination is what Scripture teaches and say things like each has his or her own opinion which is not what scripture teaches. They may use texts like, let each be persuaded in his own mind to justify this. Yet yeah, don't realize that this text in Romans, Romans 14, 5, one man esteems one day above another, another esteems every day alike. Let every man be fully persuaded in his own mind. Paul is speaking of the cleansed mind, the renewed mind, coming from the persuasion 
of the mind of Christ in them, getting them to focus on matters of importance beyond just symbols that are once used to lead us to this new mind, this mind of Christ in us. Paul warned that to stay with this fallen carnal mind, the opinion, this matter of the mind of Christ in you will not profit you. Galatians 5 2. Behold, I, Paul, say unto you that if you be circumcised, Christ shall profit you nothing. In other words, if you think that being circumcised saves you, this is for the Jew, now for the Christian, or anything like baptism today, then what Christ comes will not profit you. You would be no better than the pagans who also circumcise themselves. Jeremiah 9, 25 through 26. A time is coming, it's today, says the Lord, when I will punish all those who are circumcised in body, but not in spirit. The Egyptians, Edomites, Amorites, Moabites, Arabs, and yes, even you people of Judah, secular and religious world. For all these pagan nations also circumcise themselves. Hear that? For all these pagan nations also circumcise themselves. Unless you circumcise your hearts by loving me, your circumcision is only a heathen right like theirs and nothing more. Just a dead ritual. Notice the focus on the spirit. The human spirit cut off by the spirit of this world. That's what's occurred. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 2. Wherein times past you walk according to the course of this world, the spirit of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedient, rogue, a rogue soul acting in the of God. If you follow the course of this world, secular and religious, you will end up with what Paul also warned us about. Ephesians 4.14 That we henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro, carried about with every wind of doctrine by the slight of men, and cunning craftiness, whereby they lie in wait to deceive. Paul constantly begged us to have the same mind that was in Jesus, the Son of God in the mode of a Son of Man. This hidden mind under this mask of our flesh and the spirit of this world. Going on in Romans chapter 11, we read the following. Just as you once were disobedient and failed to listen to God, He's your Father, but have now obtained mercy because of their disobedience, the Jewish people. So they too have become disobedient so that they too may one day receive mercy because of the mercy shown to you. For God had imprisoned all, hear that? For God had imprisoned all in disobedience so that he may show mercy to all, Jew and Gentile alike. Two masks are seen here. One religious, the other secular. Either way, it was a mask that's hidden what Paul stresses at the end of this chapter. O oh, the depths of the riches and wisdom and knowledge of God, how unsearchable are his judgments and decisions, and how unfathomable, untraceable are his ways. For who has known the mind of the Lord? Or who has been his counselor? Paul's question is a what they call a rhetorical question. 
and that he had the, he had the answer, and starting those listening to him to discover it. So his question: To who has known the mind of the Lord? Here is his answer. First Corinthians two sixteen. For who have for who hath known the mind of the Lord, that he may instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ. So it's not a matter of getting this mind. It is revealed that you have this mind hidden in your human spirit and that this mind is available to the Jew and the Gentile, those religious and those of a secular mind, if they would only remove their mask. Now you can do a search on this matter of the mind of Christ and you will find millions upon millions of views of what this mind is. Yet you will find few that clearly understand that this mind is available to all. It's clearly written that this mind is all and in all. 1 Corinthians one ten. Now I beg you or beseech you, brethren, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that you all speak the same thing, and that there be no divisions among you, but that you be perfectly joined together in the same mind and in the same judgment. Colossians 3.11 where there is neither Greek nor Jew, circumcision nor uncircumcision, Bavarian, Scythian, bond or free, but Christ is all and in all. In Galatians, he includes male and female. It gets beyond all this. It's a spiritual matter, which gets linked to a new creation. Philippians chapter 2, verse 2. Fulfill ye my joy, that ye be like-minded, having the same love, being of one accord, of one mind. That mind and that love is the love of God and the mind of the Father, spoken through the Son, which is the mind of Christ in your human spirit. Is the teachings of your Father. Philippians 3.16 Nevertheless, whereto we have already attained, let us walk by the same rule. Let us mind the same thing, saying one rule, the new creation, the mind of Christ, the human spirit, in partnership with the Holy Spirit, bringing you back to hearing from God, your Father. Second Corinthians 3.14 But their minds were blinded. For until this day remains the same veil, mask, untaken away in the reading of the Old Testament, which veil, mask, is done away in Christ in your spirit in partnership with the Holy Spirit and realizing that you were to be a son of God, not to a fallen loins of Adam becoming a son or daughter of man, cut off in your spirit, going with a rogue soul, acting totally independent from your father. Going on with Romans chapter 11, verse 35. Or who has first given to him as should be paid back to him? We love him because he first loved us. For from him all things originate and through him all things live and exist and to him are all things directed to him be glory and honor forever. Amen. 
Now, once again, you go, you can do a search of those who taught from Romans chapter 11, and you'll find as many different opinions of this chapter as you find in a search of millions. The best answer to what Paul was speaking of in this chapter and all his other letters, the total word of God, is to ask your Father himself and to your spirit, to the mind of Christ, to which the Father always speaks to the Son of God, to the mind of that Son, and giving that mind into your human spirit, which came through that Son, eternally, sons of God, which many reject. I have labored all my life to come to this conclusion, to find and discover that we all wore masks. For the longest time, I wore a secular mask. In my youth, I was sent to Sunday school, church, the first church being a Presbyterian church. From there, I went to a Episcopalian church. And from an Episcopalian church, then I went to a Baptist church and from a Baptist church, I went to a Pentecostal church. And from a Pentecostal church, I went away from church, the institutional religion, and saw other sources of understanding of the human spirit, the soul, God, and who we are. Only to come full circle back to something that was in me, unaware and discover my human spirit with the mind of Christ. Holy Spirit did all that work to bring me to this. It took many years. And I'm not about to leave that. That's the most precious thing I ever found. The mind of Christ in my human spirit. God is my eternal Father, always has been, unaware. And many object to that. I devoted many a video on the eternality of the human spirit, which came off an offshoot of other videos that talked about the first begotten, this mind of Christ, the new creation, what God has done for us. It's locked up in our human spirit, waiting to be revealed but the Holy Spirit has to remove to various stages of growth. There's many tiered, layered mask of some secular ideas, religious ideas, and let it decay and die. Though the outward man is decaying, yet the inward man is being renewed day by day, being made fit for a totally new existence. It's called the new creation. He can't desire a new creation as long as you hold on this present creation and its fallen state. Hang on to a world that clearly is written in scripture is under foreclosure. It's coming to an end. 